It's a simple problem, really. You string together pipes to bring water to the city. The maximum flow is only as big as the smallest pipe in the string. So, you add another string of pipes parallel to the first. The maximum flow is simply the two put together. Then you connect the two. Now some of the flow can avoid bottlenecks, and things aren't so simple. Add more pipes and more connections, and a new field of optimization is born. The maximum flow problem has inspired hundreds of papers since it was first introduced in the 1950s. Now Andrew Goldberg and ACM AM Turing Award winner Robert Tarjan have brought all that together to bring you the highlights in efficient maximum flow algorithms. In the aftermath of World War II, the Soviet Union and United States studied each other's rail network with an eye toward disrupting it if necessary. A 1955 paper helped the U.S. figure out where air forces could cause the most damage with the least effort. This was known as the minimum cut problem. At the same time, Americans moved en masse into the suburbs, challenging planners to find the maximum flows to route them to where they live, work, and play. As it turned out, both goals were solved with the same methods. The maximum amount of flow you can send from the source to the sink is equal to the minimum value of a cut that breaks all the paths between the source and the sink. The maximum flow problem is a special case of linear programming and the maximum flow is uh, what's known as the primal problem and the minimum cut problem is uh, the dual problem. The solutions benefited more than military and transportation planners. Max flow min cut algorithms, as they're called, have many other applications. They can help match requirements to resources, workers to jobs, or even dance partners to each other. Uh, it's a bipartite graph. On one side you have workers, and on the other side you have jobs. And there is an age connecting a worker and a job if this worker is qualified to do the job. I add a source, dummy source and a dummy sink, make all the arcs go from left to right. So if I can find a maximum flow from S to T that corresponds to a maximum assignment of people to jobs. These algorithms also help determine which sports teams have been eliminated from the playoffs. Less obviously, they let image processing programs separate foreground objects from the background. For the, the boundary around the figure, which, where the differences are maximized, and you can model this as a minimum cut problem. One early way to find maximum flows was called the augmenting path method, first described in 1956. And there the matter sat for years, until papers published in the early 70s showed that you could save time by augmenting along the shortest paths first, that is, the paths with the fewest edges. And that gives a guaranteed polynomial time bound. Then in 1986, doctors Goldberg and Tarjan published an alternative method that uses local operations. So you allow flow excesses, that is, you allow some vertices to have more incoming flow than outgoing flow at the intermediate stages of the algorithm. And the field continues to expand with developments that could lead to new insights and new applications. It's, there's still a lot of uh, going on in the area and things are very dynamic. I mean, that's a beautiful problem. It has a long and rich history and that history is going to continue and we're certainly interested in continuing to work on the problem. Find out more in this month's Communications of the ACM in the review article, Efficient Maximum Flow Algorithms. I'm Tom Geller for the Association for Computing Machinery, advancing computing as a science and profession.